Bloodily, Chapter 6 Why the hell is Malachi in New York City? Chance stalked the room back and forth like a caged lion, a barely restrained powder keg of tension writhing through every muscle. Lilla slumped in the chair, trying to make sense of things but failing miserably. I don't, I don't know, but someone tortured him less than 50 feet from where I stood, Chance. Her haunting words hung ominously in the air as she stared sightlessly across the room. The same two things kept repeating through her mind. Malachi's lifeless eyes and the flesh-rending sounds from the alley. The vicious cycle of swirling thoughts made her stomach churn violently. Alvarez is going to send the autopsy report as soon as possible, but that won't be for another day or two. If Mariah was with him... She couldn't finish that sentence. Leaning forward, she buried her face in her hands, trying to force her brain to work. No. Spencer sent her to pick us up at the airport. She couldn't be in New York. Perhaps Duncan sent him? That might explain how the cryptic letter arrived. But why didn't Malachi stay there and wait for me? Why drop the note and run? A warm hand touched her shoulder as her shaking breaths threatened to release a flood of tears. For a moment, she didn't move. Instead, she focused on keeping the sorrow at bay. It wasn't only Malachi's horrific death. The way he died reminded her too much of her mother's brutal attack. Everything cascaded down like an avalanche overwhelming her. Lily, the tenderness in his voice was so inviting. She wanted to wrap it around her and escape the world. She looked up to see him kneeling in front of her. Both his hands caressed her arms, his eyes full of worry. I know you think the world is falling apart, and perhaps you're right, but I need you to keep it together. She wanted to be angry, scream at him for being selfish, but she only stared. Fingers brushed a stray hair from her face, making her heart pound like a drum. You are amazingly brilliant, and you are the best chance to find Duncan and Mariah alive. Despite her efforts to keep from breaking down, her lip trembled as tears filled her eyes. She sprung forward and wrapped her arms around him so fast that he released a surprised grunt. His stiff arms slowly folded around her, and for one selfish moment, the warmth melted everything away. When she finally pulled back, her focus began to return. Distantly, she recognized the sound of chance moving away as she wiped her face and took in several deep breaths. Once her nerves settled, she glanced up to find him leaning against the doorframe, staring out into the basement. Frowning at his back, she suddenly realized that hugging her bodyguard might be unprofessional. I'm sorry if I crossed a line. Having to apologize to his back made her feel a little wounded. Things had been so comfortable and casual, and now a stagnant vacuum encompassed the room. When he refused to respond, a sudden surge of unreasonable anger clenched her fists. Fine. Never hug your bodyguard. Now I know the rule. She snapped the words and began clearing off the desk as her mind bounced all over the place, out of balance. She heard Chance cross the room, but pointedly ignored him as she threw things haphazardly in her case. Lily. He sounded more tired than upset, which only inflamed her rage. The target of that temper was uncertain. Was she mad at him, herself, or the world that slaughtered Malachi? Lilith. Still refusing to acknowledge his existence, he grabbed her arm and tugged her away from the desk. Damn it, Lily! Every micro-expression of pain haunted his soft, chiseled face and red-rimmed eyes. I am here to do a job. I can't let my feelings get in the way of that. I need to keep you safe. That is my sworn duty. Gregor, trust me, and I won't let him down, or you. He sent me specifically because of that reason. She tugged her arm away from him and stepped back as her mind stuttered. Why the hell was she so furious? She felt disconnected from the emotions controlling her body, watching everything happen but powerless to stop it. I understand. You work for my dad. Nothing personal. The words rang with malice and she instantly regretted every one of them as he hung his head. The illogical wrath inside her cut him deep and now appeared sated, slinking away and leaving her back in control chance. Her voice came out like an unsteady whisper. I am so sorry. I didn't mean. The sound of laughter startled her. When his head raised to meet her stare, his bloodshot eyes still glistened. Nothing personal. The laughter increased to a fevered pitch as he shook his head. His hand ran through his hair as he turned away, 
walking toward the door. Abruptly, he stopped, turned back with a determined scowl, and walked right up to her. Did you listen to a word I said? Gregor sent me with you, not Timothy or Ray, for a reason. You're his head of security, and he trusts you? The words began as a firm statement, but ended as an uncertain question. No, it is entirely personal, Lily. That's why I can't do this. Do what? Her head tilted as she frowned at him, trying to figure out what the hell he was saying. He released an exasperated huff. You remember that tattoo you keep harassing me about? Anger surged in his voice, but she didn't understand the connection. I got it as soon as I turned 18. Any idea what it is? She shook her head without saying a word. I planned to make it a surprise, but when I talked to Gregor, he went ballistic, so I buried everything, kept it all to myself. She frowned and took another step back. Confusion and fear clouded her mind as she tried to find her voice. What is the tattoo? Chance clenched his jaw and stared down at the desk for a moment. When his eyes snapped back to her, they held a mixture of pain and anger. A lily. The words left her flabbergasted, knocking all the air out of her lungs. Before she could compose herself, Chance stalked through the door. I'll wait for you upstairs. We should get some work done. His flat voice echoed, and seconds later, she heard him stomping up the stairs. Lilith dropped into the chair, reeling and disconnected. Rubbing her temples, she tried to organize recent events. Someone abducted Duncan and possibly Mariah. Malachi died at the hands of a madman in New York City. Spencer might be insane. She came close to dying of a massive head wound. Now Chance revealed he got a tattoo for her over a decade ago as some grand gesture. She burst out laughing. Holy hell. <laughs> oh, this sounds like a damn soap opera. <clears throat> Still a little shaky, she pushed out of the chair. Ultimately, Chance was right. With so much writing on the line, the last thing they had time for was personal crap. Still, a warmth glowed in the pit of her stomach. Certain moments on the trip stood out, but she immediately dismissed them. Chance never dated women longer than a week. He never played head games and clearly stated his lack of interest in anything serious. The thought never occurred to her that he might have a reason why. She needed to get her head back into the game, not reevaluate her love life. So what was the next step? What leads did they have? Mariah's apartment in Knoxville might turn up something since Duncan entrusted her with a lot. The property mentioned in his note was another possibility. She could research the place online or head to the county records office, perhaps get lucky and find a name. When she made her way upstairs, she found Chance staring out the dining room window with his arm against the frame. Standing there, he embodied the isolation she'd noticed in his home and the artwork hanging on its walls. No one knew him. He made sure of that. Clearing her throat, she watched his spine stiffen as his head dropped to one side. The movements indicated a willingness to listen, but not to turn around. You're right. There is work to do. She fought against the nervousness rising in her stomach. Thank you for snapping me out of it. I had no right to be so cruel to you, but I couldn't stop myself. You did nothing wrong, Chance. Inch by inch, he relaxed and finally turned toward her. As soon as she saw his face, she continued. However, his eyes widened as he froze with a deep down fear. Do not think for one damn second we aren't having a long conversation about this tattoo thing later. I understand why you need to clear the air, but this is not the most convenient time. She flashed a soft smile at him that instantly eased the terror in his face. Over a decade was a long time to keep a secret buried, which explained the mood swings and defensive behavior. While contemplating whether to drop the subject, she slipped on her coat, pulling her auburn curls out of the collar. She glanced up at him with an amused grin. Seriously, though, a lily. He laughed, but she saw the vibrant blush on his cheeks. Yeah, well, you know what they say about best laid plans. Second guessing that right about now, aren't you? She chuckled and reached for the forensics kit, thankful they could still laugh. Actually, he smirked and grabbed the heavy bag of journals. His green flecked eyes caught her, sending a shiver up her arms. Not for a second. A soft, genuine smile lit his face, full of everything but promising nothing. Before her brain could analyze his words, Chance shifted the conversation. So, boss lady, what's the plan? Well, I don't want to wake Spencer, considering how unstable he is. I found the address to Malachi and Mariah's place in the office. 
We could head up to Knoxville and poke around. The drive should take about 45 minutes, I think. He peeked down at his watch and nodded. If we leave now, we can miss rush hour traffic. Let's hit the road. They managed to limit the conversation to theories on the case and avoided any mention of tattoos, thankfully. With so much to process, throwing that into the mix would overwhelm her. The mere thought of someone holding a decade-long torch for her was terrifying. Mariah's an accountant, and Malachi's a real estate agent. Chance frowned in distaste at the four-story condos masquerading as British cottages. Lilith nodded. Yeah, they own their own businesses, which, according to Gregor, are moderately successful. They kept using the present tense, talking about Malachi, as if he were still alive. Her subconscious refused to acknowledge his death because he suffered more than anyone should endure. Chance's voice shook her from her morbid thoughts. Why not buy a house? I mean, this is a gorgeous place and all, but if money isn't a problem, why live here? She shrugged and started up the front walkway. They hate yard work? They like having neighbors? He shook his head, baffled by the idea someone would choose to live in a boxy condo if they had other options. The thought never occurred to her. She lived her whole life in apartments, except for that regrettable six months in college. Come on now, your place is a loft apartment hidden inside a warehouse. I didn't see a yard unless you count the black mold as foliage. His eyes narrowed at her smug grin. My non-existent love of landscaping isn't what makes a home more appealing. It's the absence of loud, noisy neighbors. Well, you went to the extreme on that one. Go big or go home. Your only neighbors are the drunk vagrants that you shoo away from the bottom floor. This time, his frown deepened beyond the realm of playful. I like my space and I take precautions. There aren't homeless people living on my property. Thank you very much. Lilith chuckled and bumped his shoulder with hers. Touchy. Reluctantly, he returned the shoulder bump as his wounded pride took a back seat to a smart-ass smile. Keep it up, princess, and I'll make you brave the whole bottom floor at night with a bottle of booze as bait. You wouldn't. She feigned a dramatic gasp. He turned to her with a sly grin, holding a twinkle of mischief. Oh, don't tempt me. The playful wink sent tiny shivers over her skin. Now, why don't we check out that apartment? Only one problem. She peered through the glass door leading to the inside stairs. We don't have a key. She scowled as if that would scare the door into magically opening. Using her lockpick gun could prove problematic. If anyone walked by, they would be in big trouble. Ending up in jail for breaking and entering was the last thing they needed. Leave this to me, Holly. He stepped up to the bank of buzzers and pressed the button for the apartment across from Mariah's. Seconds later, an older woman's voice crackled through the speaker. Hello? While holding down the button, he smiled brightly at Lilith. Hello, ma'am. My name is Alan, and I'm with Mariah's cousin. We drove down from New York City to visit her and Malachi, but they aren't answering. They gave us a key to the apartment, but they forgot to give us one for the outside door. Oh, of course. How lovely of you. I'll buzz you right in. She sounded 90 years old, although the crackling speaker distorted the voice too much to be sure. He turned, flashing a brilliant grin, and tipped his invisible hat. The buzz sounded, and he swung the door open for her. After you, milady. Why, thank you, Alan. With a soft laugh, she breezed through the door and started up the stairs. When they reached the third floor landing, a woman stepped out of the apartment on the left. Plump wrinkles creased around her eyes and mouth as she smiled, revealing a long history of happy days. Lilith placed her age somewhere between 70 and 90, not far off from her earlier estimation. The woman shuffled closer, wearing a white house coat covered in tiny blue roses that matched the slippers on her feet and her thinning hair. Chance stepped forward and beamed at her. I'm Ellen, so wonderful to meet such a helpful neighbor. My pleasure, dear. She patted his cheek with a gnarled hand and then glanced over at Lilith. Forgive my manners. Not missing a beat, he pulled Lilith over to him, his arm possessively hugging her waist. This is my fiancé, Lily, Mariah's cousin. The sweet old woman brightened and turned her smile on Lilith, who quickly shook off her startled expression. What a beautiful name! Her tired eyes drifted back to chance. My name is Ida McCleary. Mariah and Malachi have been my neighbors for quite some time. You certainly seem like a sweet couple. I'm glad they have some good family. 
the emphasis on her last statement made Lilith stop. How do you mean? I'd appeared up, surprised and a little embarrassed. Oh, I don't mean any offense, dear. I'm an old-fashioned woman. I don't think a man should fight so much with his sister. You mean Spencer? The woman nodded. I believe sibling squabbles should stay out of the hall. This time her nod was more of an exclamation point. Family business should stay in the family. All but listen to me going on and on. I'm sure you two are tired. If you need anything else, please don't hesitate. With that well-worn smile stretching the wrinkles in her face, she turned and shuffled back into her apartment. Once safely inside the Sanders' apartment, Lilith leaned against the door and chuckled. Okay, bizarre does not cover it. Alan? He peeked back at her for a moment. That's my middle name, so technically not a lie. He began scanning the apartment for security threats. Chance Alan Devereaux. I pictured something more exotic, like Xavier or Gambit or something. What am I, part X-Men? It's after my dad. The sharp tone resonating in his last words made it clear that discussing family was off limits. And fiancé? I mean, a bit fast, don't you think? A sly grin curled his lips. Well, why else would a girl bring a guy over to her cousin's place? Could you imagine Ida's face if I told her the truth? I figured we should play a more traditional role for the locals, to be safe. He disappeared into the living room before she could respond. Black and white pictures from various countries in simple black frames covered the hallway. As she walked past them, she recognized a few from Japan, Germany, and Italy before the hall opened into a surprisingly spacious living room. She quickly realized Mariah shared her father's hatred of bare walls as the myriad of frames continued. Most displayed images of her and Malachi, including their wedding photos, vacation pictures, and random candid shots. An eerie sadness settled over her shoulders as she browsed the smiling pictures, knowing Malachi was lying on a slab and Mariah was missing. No matter what happened now, they would never take another happy photo together. Low, simplistic furniture gave the room an Asian feel, which blended with the miniature kimonos and bamboo paintings over the couch. A curio of Japanese dolls sat on the mantel above the slate rock fireplace and a gas insert. Mariah never talked about Japan or the Orient, so this had to be Malachi's influence on decorating. Chance wandered off down a narrow hall as she opened the first door, which led to the master bedroom. An artful blend of mahogany and delicate blue made the room sophisticated but not overly masculine or feminine. She pulled open a drawer in an espresso-colored nightstand and frowned at the odd contents. A mottled mixture of pills, hotel shampoos, razors, and small personal items littered the inside as if someone carelessly dumped them in the drawer. Of course, her job didn't include judging the organizational skills of others. The nightstand on the opposite side of the bed held various things Lilith wished she could unsee. It appeared Mariah strongly believed in the electronic age, something she did not need to know about her cousin's private life. After flipping a light switch, she opened the door to an OCD dream. There was a walk-in closet with no clothes on the ground, no junk on the top shelf, and no boxes littering the corners. A small suitcase sat to the left of the door with a beautiful collection of shoes laid perfectly straight along the wall. She glanced along the twin rows of crisply ironed clothes, all organized by color, and noticed a few items crumpled with deep wrinkles. Odd. Chance? She peeked out into the empty hall and opened the next door, which revealed a clean and spacious bathroom. Moving on to the last room, she found Chance standing over a desk, shuffling through papers. You find anything interesting? A bunch of accounting paperwork. Mariah's been dealing with all the family finances, plus her normal work. She grabbed a few pages and peered over the Excel spreadsheets, whistling as her eyes scanned the page. Wow, a lot of accounts. Everything from real estate to medical research. What about you, find anything? He left her to deal with the paperwork and walked over to the shelves filled with a random collection of books and knickknacks. No, the clothes still nagged at her. Except it's, it's probably nothing, but a few outfits are wrinkled all to hell, hanging in their insanely clean and organized closet. He opened his mouth to say something when his cell phone rang. Shrugging at the number, he answered and walked toward the door. How are you feeling, Spence? She took a seat at the desk and went through the drawers while listening to Chance's side of the conversation. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Now we're up at Mariah's place poking around. Don't apologize, Spence. We didn't want to wake you. I don't think Mariah's neighbor likes you very much. 
He laughed wholeheartedly at some witty response, which was a relief. He sounded stable, and hopefully he could stay that way. Well, sure, of course. Okay, see you then. After hanging up, he turned to Lilith with a half smile. Man, he hates the old bat living across from Mariah, which I assume is Ida. Anyway, he's meeting us here in about an hour. I figured we should tell him about Malachi in person. You're right, and perhaps he can shed some light on all of this. If Mariah kept anything here for Duncan, he might at least know where to look. All I know so far are three things. She ticked each item off on her fingers as she spoke. One, Malachi loves Asian culture. Two, they are meticulous about cleaning, but not about what they dump in nightstand drawers. And three, Mariah must stockpile batteries somewhere. Chance glanced up at that last bit. Do I want to know? Lilith flashed a quick, awkward smile. I doubt it. Silence settled in while they both continued the search until Chance changed the subject. You know what I don't get? Why do you think he only mentioned Mariah in the letter and not Spencer? As Chance thought out loud, he leafed through a book with glossy pictures of some ancient text. Mariah has always been the more responsible one, accountant versus art appraiser. The duties he passed on to Mariah required her mathematical skills. I suppose he didn't have much for an art appraiser to do. Hmm, makes sense, I suppose. He didn't sound 100% convinced, but didn't elaborate on his doubts, content to continue thumbing through the book in his hands. What are you reading? Uh, while squinting at the cover, she closed the overly organized drawer of office supplies and reached for the next one. A pictorial of a famous book known as the Voyage Manuscript. It's one of the oldest texts in known history, but a total enigma. I saw an exhibit at Yale's Beinecke Rare Book and Manuscript Library a few years back. Fascinating piece. Lilith arched an eyebrow and stared at him like he'd grown a second head. He glanced up in time to catch her expression and scowled. After flipping his middle finger in her general direction, he returned his attention to the hardcover. Just because I'm a bodyguard doesn't mean I'm mindless. I happen to appreciate history. When she still said nothing, he sighed heavily and continued. Plus, Gregor took a tour of the Yale Museum a few years ago. He loves puzzles, especially the one in this manuscript. She chuckled while combing through some more papers in a file drawer. Ah, the truth finally comes out. Interest by proximity. Deciding her retort wasn't worth responding to, they continued the investigation in silence. Chance kept himself entertained with various books detailing the Voyerich manuscript. Meanwhile, she found nothing but reports on personal finances and investments. A gold mine if she wanted to conduct an audit, but otherwise useless. You guys still here? Spencer's voice came from the front hall. Yeah, back here in the office. After shelving the book in his hands, he gracefully hopped up from the floor. When Spencer peeked into the room, he glanced up at Chance, who towered over him by a good nine inches. He still appeared vaguely homeless, but his eyes were clear and sharp. You guys find anything here? He stared at them both anxiously. The hopeful expectation on his face made telling the truth about Malachi more unbearable. Why don't we go out to the dining room and talk? I'd like to hear things from your view. The most insignificant, mundane things can end up being important. Plus, there is news from New York we need to tell you. She busied herself with placing items on the desk in their proper places, keeping her eyes down and rushing through the last sentence. Sure, he sounded uncertain, which he could understand. His mind already dreaded the worst, and her cryptic words didn't help his anxiety level. Lilith and Chance took one side of the table, and Spencer sat across from them. Neither of them wanted to rush into things, so they waited for him to start. While he stared around the room, she noticed his blue eyes sat closer to his thin nose than his sister's, pushing him from handsome to beady-eyed. He pulled a photograph off the wall and stared down at the image of Duncan, the unlucky couple, and himself. His mouth tightened in a guarded line with darker things lingering below the surface. Not surprising, given his situation. I haven't been close to Dad in a long time. His voice came out flat as he ran his long fingers over the glass. Dad's been so damn preoccupied with his pet projects. He dumped the business on Mariah and Malachi and humors me with dinner now and then. When did he hand the business over? She started small to avoid triggering the defensive aggression he displayed earlier. Rubbing his stubbly chin, he frowned and thought, A few years back, right before he became obsessed with true crime stories, 
He freaked out over some photographer's death, but I can't remember her name. After that, he dove into research, spending a little more time at the Madisonville house. At first, a few days every couple of months, then every month, then weekends. He sighed heavily, placing the frame on the table and finally meeting their eyes. This is the first time he's left that damn house in six months. So you don't know what he was working on? Meeting her steady gaze, he huffed in a short chuckle. I evaluate art, which is the limit of my usefulness to him. If Dad had a question about paintings, he came to me, which never happened. If he had questions about anything else, he went to Mariah. The subtle contempt that pulled at his lips almost surprised her, but then what family didn't have inner struggle? Gregor said you and Mariah went to the Madisonville house for dinner that night. He slumped back further into the chair and draped one arm over the back. Mariah's idea, she wanted to keep the whole family vibe going. She thought that would help Dad. He forgot things, important things. If he were human, I'd say he had Alzheimer's. Was Malachi with Mariah? His eyes snapped up in confusion before drifting back to the photo on the table. No, he left on some trip. I didn't ask where. Malachi and I weren't exactly friends. When Mariah and I showed up, Dad wasn't home, so we waited for him. We ended up crashing in the guest room upstairs. In the morning, he still hadn't returned, and we knew something must be wrong. Mariah found some drops of blood down by the office and freaked. Yeah, I saw those. She thought back to the bedroom, which appeared untouched. But then, considering Mariah's precise personality, she probably made sure both rooms were picture perfect. Frequently cleaning and organizing masqueraded as coping mechanisms to deal with extreme stress. Ignoring his words, he continued as various emotions flickered across his face. Mariah drove back to her office while I checked out Dad's place in Knoxville. I called Gregor when I didn't find anything. Then the other day, early in the morning, Mariah asked me to check into a warehouse outside of Nashville. Something she started checking into for Dad, I guess. When I told her about you coming down, she volunteered to meet you guys at the airport and drive you to Madisonville. That's the last I heard from her. What did you find at the warehouse? Lilith glanced over to see Chance studying him, ready to latch on to the first whisper of a lead they'd come across. After running both hands through his hair, Spencer rubbed at the back of his neck. Dead end. Only a dank building abandoned for years. I was furious with Mariah until I realized she never showed up at the airport. If I stayed, if I didn't leave her, this is all my damn fault. The frustration still lingered on his face, blurred by a pang of regret. Any idea why Malachi would be in New York City? With no pretense of surprise, Spencer slowly turned his stare on her. After a few seconds, it melted into an indifferent frown as he shrugged. Is that where he is? Probably some real estate thing. He's always running off somewhere, leaving Mariah alone. Spencer never made his dislike of Malachi a secret, not even at their wedding. He's dead, Spence. Chance spoke up with a pointed glance at Lilith. Guess he didn't want her to drag things out. Spencer's face crumpled and went blank, staring sightlessly past Chance and Lilith. At some point, people lost the ability to be surprised, conditioned by the torrent of awful events. She couldn't read anything at all in his face, but perhaps there was too much to decipher. How? Someone tortured him as a warning or a message, I think. The one thing I'm sure of is that it's connected to whatever's going on down here. The timing makes mere coincidence impossible. Lilith kept her voice neutral, scared of Spencer turning on her. Except for a briefly clenched jaw, he remained perfectly still. Spencer shook his head and grunted, leaning back in his chair. This is insane. Malachi. <sighs> Lord knows I didn't like the man, but... His eyes drifted to the ceiling, and he ran his hand through his hair again, trying to work through his frustration. Then he fell into silence, closing his eyes and taking deep, purposeful breaths. Have you found anything since arriving? Animosity seeped back into his voice as Chance stiffened beside her. She realized she wasn't the only one who noticed. Honestly, not much more than vague references. One note I found said Mariah started helping him with research. I didn't find anything here. Any chance she kept stuff at her office or Malachi's? He scratched at his shoulder and let out an aggravated sigh. I wouldn't know. I haven't set foot in either one. Hell, it's been a few weeks since I've been here at the apartment. Mariah and I, 
We disagreed a lot. The usual family stuff. She kept wanting me to do more and then got mad whenever I tried to help out. The nervous energy itched under his skin as his eyes drifted back to the family photo in front of him. She could understand that. He wanted to find his dad and sister, even if they didn't always get along. Why don't we split up and search the offices? Perhaps we can find something useful. Her voice was too high and sweet, as if talking down to a kid verging on a tantrum. Spencer didn't miss the condescending tone. He cocked his head to one side and stared at her for a moment. His already thin lips stretched into a forced smile that made her skin crawl. Sure thing. Do we get walkie-talkies and secret spy names, too? What about matching trench coats and decoder rings? I'm not some five-year-old you need to coddle. If you want to talk to me, do it like an adult. His lip curled in a sneer full of old wounds. You want to help so bad? Find my damn family instead of trying to play therapist. Otherwise, you're wasting my fucking time. Before she could wipe the startled look off her face, Chance hopped off the chair, his hands gripping the table aggressively. You are an ungrateful prick. Look, I know you're going through a lot, but stop the attitude. We are here to help. So if all you want to share are snide remarks, keep your mouth shut. Spencer's eyes widened in surprise, but quickly hardened into an icy stare. An amused glint lit his face while he stared down Chance, as if past the point of caring. What are you going to do, half-blood? With nothing to lose, why not pick a fight with the biggest guy in the room? In a split second, Chance sped to the other side of the table, grabbing the front of Spencer's shirt and hauling him closer. You want to find your dad and sister? Stop being a dick and let us help. With a disgusted look, he shoved Spencer in the chair and stalked back to his seat. The men locked eyes with equal contempt for an intense moment, and then Spencer finally dropped his head, conceding. He stared down at the table, his disheveled hair hiding his face. You're right. His voice trembled as he pulled in a shaking breath that rattled his shoulders. I'm so tired of chasing dead ends. I've been fighting with Dad and Mariah, and because of that, I'm not any help. I shouldn't be taking my anger out on you. He slammed his fists down on the table, making Lilith jump in her chair. I'm so tired, so damn tired of being useless. Making a conscious effort to be more careful this time, she spoke in a calm and casual tone. Then help us. Sorry, I know you guys are trying to help, and I can't blame you because we don't have any leads. Spencer's mouth quirked into an awkward smile, like someone trying it for the first time. All right, do you know where your sister kept the keys? Using one would be easier and less suspicious than picking the lock. Yeah, I'll take Malachi's office. I know more about real estate than accounting. I'll grab the keys. He slid out of the chair, staring at the floor like a kicked puppy. A few minutes later, he returned with two key rings, one of which he tossed to Chance. Meet back here in two hours? Chance and Lilith shared a look and then nodded at Spencer. Sure, buddy. Sorry about the tough love, but you need to stay in control and stop blaming people, especially the ones that are trying to help you. One side of Spencer's mouth came up in an unattractive smile that appeared almost smug. However, she couldn't be sure with the mangled mess of visible emotions on his face. You gotta do what you gotta do. You guys head out. I'm going to grab a quick shower and borrow some of Malachi's clothes. I'm sure he won't mind if... Spencer abruptly stopped as he thought back over his words. Slumping his shoulders, he waved them to the hallway. Anyway, happy hunting. End of chapter 6